Shanghai experienced a wave of bankruptcies and the closure of a series of stores, shopping malls. China's jewelry industry is facing a trend of store closures. Chao Tai Fook has closed 180 stores in half a year. Zhengzhou Tunnel flooded, many bodies found in Yan, strong typhoon hits Fujian. China's economy continues to decline seriously, and domestic consumption is sluggish. Recently, Long Mai Town, a large and famous shopping center among the top in Shanghai, announced that it would close on August 1. According to incomplete statistics, in the first half of the year alone, 6,882 stores and shopping malls in China closed, a record number. These are just surface statistics, the actual number is likely much higher. On July 23, Shanghai's Mailong Town Plaza announced on its WeChat official account that all other merchants slash tenants in Mailong Town Plaza, including shopping malls, office buildings, and underground parking lots, except the Consulate General of the United States of America in Shanghai will close from August 1, 2024. In 1997, Mailong Town Plaza appeared on Nanjing West Road in Shanghai. It is located in Shanghai's top business district, Together with Hang Lung Plaza and Citic Pacific, it forms the Mailong Golden Triangle and is one of the representatives of Shanghai's high-end shopping malls. Isit In Department Store is one of the main merchants in Mailong Town Plaza and has been with the people of Shanghai for 27 years. On June 30, 2024, Shanghai Mailong Town Isit In Department Store officially ceased operations due to the expiration of its lease. Less than two months later, the news of the closure of Mailong Town Plaza came out. Mr. Hu from Shanghai told Radio Free Asia that there is a building at the famous Golden Crossroads, the intersection of Nanjing Road and Tibet Road in Shanghai. Last week, he went to dinner with his friends. Two-thirds of the restaurants upstairs were gone. Several large supermarkets near his home are now closed. He said, Nanjing Road in Shanghai is the first commercial street in China and probably one of the best in Asia. The landmark plaza on Nanjing Road in Shanghai also closed in 2022. Waihai Road used to be called Xiaofei Road. This street is also very lively. In the minds of Shanghai people and foreigners, its grade is higher than Nanjing Road. There used to be a lot of foreigners here, but now there are very few people in the mall, and it is deserted. It must be that the purchasing power of the people is not good, Mr. Hu said. Most Chinese people have no money, but some people in Shanghai have some money in their hands. Affected by the economic downturn, they dare not spend recklessly and restrain their consumption. Chen Songkring, director of the new Economic Policy Research Center of Donghua University, worked in Shanghai for three years, working in Hong Kong Plaza 66 and Lujazui respectively. He told Radio Free Asia that Shanghai is already the best-performing first-tier city, and other cities such as Beijing, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou have different situations, not to mention other second, third, and fourth-tier cities. On July 19, the information website, investment community platform under Kink quoted incomplete statistics from Yilin Business, saying that in the first half of 2024, at least 6,882 stores in China announced store closures, covering more than 100 companies, including large channel stores such as Walmart, Yonghui Supermarket, RT Mart, and Hima, as well as top chain catering brands such as Luckin Coffee and MixUI City. From the perspective of business formats, the closed stores include 498 supermarkets, 13 department stores, more than 6,000 restaurants, and more than 200 other formats such as clothing, education, and training. China's jewelry industry is facing a trend of store closures. Chao Tai Fook has closed 180 stores in half a year. The performance of Chao Tai Fook, China's jewelry king, recently released, shows that the group's jewelry stores in the mainland have decreased by 180 in just half a year. And Chao Tai Fook is not the only one to close stores on a large scale this year.
According to reports from the financial sector and Jimian News, on July 24, Chao Tai Fook Jewelry Group Company, LTD, here and after referred to as Chao Tai Fook, released its unaudited main operating data for the three months ending June 30, 2024. Data shows that Chao Tai Fook's overall retail value from April to June this year fell by 20.0% year-on-year, of which the retail value of the mainland China market fell by 18.6% and the Hong Kong and Macau markets fell by 28.8%. Data shows that the same store sales of Chao Tai Fook Jewelry's mainland direct stores and franchise stores fell by 26.4% and 19.1% year-on-year respectively during the quarter, while in the Hong Kong and Macau markets, which are mainly direct stores, Chao Tai Fook Jewelry's same store sales fell by 30.8% year-on-year. In this quarter, the gold jewelry and products that have helped Chao Tai Fook jewelry make a lot of money in the mainland in the past few years also showed negative growth, recording a year-on-year -year decline of 18%. At the same time, jewelry inlays such as natural diamonds, platinum and K-gold jewelry have been sluggish in recent years and continue to maintain negative growth in this quarter, recording a year-on-year -year decline in retail value of 23.1%. Net reduction of 180 stores in half a year. Store closing trend may intensify. Currently, the price of gold has risen to 751 slash gram, but the number of Chao Tai Fook stores is shrinking. According to the Daily Economic News, in the first quarter of fiscal year 2025, Chao Tai Fook opened 85 new jewelry stores in the mainland market, but closed 176 stores, a net decrease of 91 stores. As of the end of June 2024, Chao Tai Fook has 7,429 jewelry stores worldwide, including 7,284 in the mainland, 87 in Hong Kong and Macau, and 58 in other markets. In the previous quarter, January-March this year, Chao Tai Fook stores in the mainland market decreased by 89 stores. This means that in just half a year, Chao Tai Fook has reduced its jewelry stores in the mainland by 180. Since 2024, Chao Tai Fook jewelry's stock price has fallen by 36%. From the beginning of 2023 to the present, Chao Tai Fook jewelry's stock price has plummeted by nearly 50%, and its market value is expected to evaporate by about $80 billion. After the release of the first quarter report of the 2024 by 25 fiscal year, Several brokerages such as UBS Flora and Bank of America Securities lowered their target prices for Chao Tai Fook jewelry in the fiscal year. Chao Tai Fook's stock price fell 7.7% to HK $7.30 on the same day, hitting a new low since September 2020. In this year's gold jewelry market, Chao Tai Fook is not the only one to close stores on a large scale. Another Chinese jewelry giant, Luck Fook Group, announced on July 19 that the group's overall retail value fell 18% year-on-year in the first quarter of fiscal year 2025, and its overall retail revenue fell 23% year-on-year, its Luck Fook jewelry stores in the mainland market decreased by a net of 108 stores. In the previous quarter, the number of jewelry stores in the market was a net increase of three stores. Zhu Guangyu, a senior expert in China's jewelry industry, believes that if the macroeconomic environment continues to be sluggish and consumer purchasing power continues to decline, jewelry and gold companies may continue to adopt a strategy of downsizing to cope with the pressure. Zhengzhou Tunnel flooded, many bodies found in Yang, strong typhoon hits Fujian. Come and pay attention to Chinese news. Floods continue in many provinces of China. Recently, the disaster in Henan and Sichuan has been particularly severe with many people killed and missing. At the same time, a super typhoon is about to make landfall on the coast of Fujian. In addition, many flights to Taipei and Okinawa have been canceled or postponed due to the typhoon. Video shooter said, this typhoon has not arrived yet, and this community has already become like this. The meteorological department announced on Tuesday, July 23, that Typhoon No. 3, Jimmy, Kemi is about to land in coastal areas such as central Fujian, with the strongest wind force reaching more than level 10. The heavy rainfall it brings will affect the south of the Yangtze River and even more areas. Typhoon No. 4 Pabian made landfall in the coastal areas of Wanning, Hainan on July 22. 
The Hainan Meteorological Bureau issued a warning on Monday that there will be heavy rainfall in many places in Hainan over the next three days. Hainan resident. Oh my god, the trees were uprooted. Video shooter said. This subway entrance is so scary, the water is so deep. Meanwhile, Zhengzhou, Hanan was hit by heavy rain again on Monday, 22nd. The city was flooded, vehicles and tunnels were submerged, and many people were trapped. Mr. Yang, the boss of a Zhengzhou company. I am 1.8 meters tall, and the water reached my neck and ears. The water level is the same as on July 20th, 2021, and it also flooded 10 days ago. The disaster is very serious. Online videos show that a man was suspected to have been electrocuted to death next to a street lamp on a street in Jinshui district. Witness Mr. Wang. At 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening, I saw many people in front of me saying hello and not letting me pass. And then I heard someone say that he was electrocuted. Recently in Yon, Sichuan, due to mountain floods caused by heavy rain, as of 2 p.m. on Monday, 14 bodies have been found, and more than 20 people are still missing. People revealed that the local hydropower station released floodwaters, aggravating the local disaster. Mr. Jiang, a resident of Sichuan, some houses are gone, there is no trace of them, not even a brick. The two rivers merged into one river, which worsened the disaster. Since the beginning of last month, floods have continued in China, causing heavy losses to the people. So far, at least hundreds of people are known to have died. Due to the authorities' cover-up of the truth, the actual number of casualties is unknown. China plunges deeper into economic abyss as businesses collapse, fueling rise of homelessness. A tsunami of despair has engulfed China, shattering lives and crushing dreams. Millions are jobless, their purpose lost. Depression is a constant companion, hopelessness reigns as more lose the will to live. The very fabric of society unravels, communities crumble. The scale of this emotional crisis is shocking, with millions pushed to the brink. What is going on? In the heart of China's gleaming cities, a dark reality lurks in the shadows. Amidst the towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, countless individuals lie on the pavement, their lives shattered by a system that has failed them. These forgotten souls, with nowhere to turn and no place to call home, serve as a stark reminder of the hidden struggles that plague China's rapid rise. As we confront this shocking reality, we are forced to question the very foundations of China's success. Is China actually achieving what they are claiming? Or their success builds by ignoring the pain of their citizens? Let's find out. I can't hold on anymore. Finally, my chain of eight fruit stores that I painstakingly built has closed down. I never expected to end up labeled as a debtor, owing over 28,000 USD. Today is May 3rd. Perhaps you're all on vacation with your children, but I can't go anywhere. I've been sued by my best friend, someone I've helped the most. Now that I'm in trouble, she's suing me. I need to find a way to pay her back. So, I reached out to another friend for help. He asked me to wait at his company for half an hour, but I ended up waiting for eight hours without seeing him. He didn't answer my calls, despite me calling him over a dozen times. I called two other close friends, who run their own businesses. I understand times have been tough for businesses these past two years. When I was doing well, these two friends would call and message me several times a day. We used to spend every day together drinking tea, chatting and shopping, sharing everything with each other, why this happening to me? The unprecedented wave of business closures sweeping across China is a stark testament to the country's deepening economic crisis. The once thriving Chinese economy is now grappling with a confluence of factors that have led to the shuttering of countless businesses, from small mom and pop shops to large, well established chains. At the heart of this economic downturn is the manufacturing sector, which has been contracting for six consecutive months as evidenced by the Purchasing Manager's Index PMI falling below the critical 50-point mark. This prolonged contraction has had a ripple effect throughout the economy, contributing to the mass closure of businesses across various industries. Hello everyone, I am 386,000 USD in debt and used to be the owner of an essential oils and beer physical store. I haven't slept for two days and nights, feeling extremely exhausted and tired, during the day, I have to face various calls from credit card and online loan collectors, and these calls have even reached my home and my friends. 
I know the mistakes I've made, and I have to bear the consequences. I can only blame myself for being too hot-headed and making reckless investments and expansions, leading to company mergers, and now having nothing, deep in debt. I can't take it anymore. If I weren't in debt, my life would have been worry-free. Looking back at over 30, my life has become so miserable. Overnight, I went bankrupt. From earning nearly 10 million, I have now become someone with over 372,000 USD in debt. Do you know what a person in debt fears the most? Some people say it's being hounded by creditors. Actually, that's normal. It's only right to repay debts. What you really fear is loneliness and isolation. No friends, no money, no one willing to listen to you, and everyone afraid you might drag them down. I'm 40 years old and in debt for over 2.7 million. I built my business from the ground up in freight forwarding, with ventures involving fleets, coal processing plants, coal trade both domestic and international, and tile factories. I started my entrepreneurial journey in 2017. By the 27th of last December, everything fell apart overnight. From earning nearly 10 million I became a person in debt for over 2.7 million. The challenges faced by China's manufacturing sector have also contributed to the mass closure of businesses. While China has made significant strides in certain industries, such as electric vehicles and information technology, it continues to face formidable challenges in crucial areas like advanced computer chip production. The country's heavy reliance on foreign technology and expertise in the computer chip industry has been exacerbated by the U.S. government's decision to restrict the export of advanced computer chips to China. This move has hindered China's ability to innovate and reduce its dependence on foreign suppliers, further compounding its economic troubles. As a result, many businesses in the technology sector have been forced to shut down, unable to compete in the global market without access to advanced computer chips. Dear fans and true entrepreneurs of my channel, I have repeatedly emphasized this point. This isn't something I came up with Jack Ma said it. I believe he's right. 80% of private enterprises will go bankrupt. Does this include you? If it does, shouldn't you think about what to do before bankruptcy happens? Bankruptcy is no small matter. It brings a lot of debt problems and lasting consequences. Bankruptcy affects guarantors, personal assets, and even children's guarantees. If you don't plan ahead, you'll be in trouble. Not to mention, the ongoing trade war between the United States and China, which began in 2018, has further exacerbated the challenges faced by Chinese businesses. The U.S. Government's imposition of tariffs on billions of dollars worth of Chinese goods, citing the need to safeguard American jobs and intellectual property, has had a devastating impact on Chinese exporters. Many businesses that relied heavily on exports to the United States have been forced to close their doors, unable to remain competitive in the face of increased tariffs and reduced demand. China's retaliatory tariffs have also disrupted global supply chains, leading to a ripple effect of business closures throughout the country. I am Sun Jinyi a single mother with over 6.4 million USD in debt, raising a two-year and 10-month-old son. Five years ago, I was a wealthy person with riches that ordinary people couldn't earn in several lifetimes. I owned a multinational business with assets worth several billion. Every day I was indulging in lavish lifestyles and self-admiration. Back then I was so arrogant that I thought there was nothing in this world that I, son, couldn't do. I believed I was God's favorite, a domineering businesswoman. But later everything changed, proving that life is unpredictable. Overnight my world turned upside down. For the past few years I struggled to hold on, but my debts kept growing like a snowball rolling bigger and bigger. Now I've lost all my assets, faced lawsuits, and had everything auctioned off. All that remains is a debt of over 46.8 million and my little son who doesn't understand any of this. But that is not all. Recently, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's recent decision to add three Chinese companies to the entity list under the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act has further complicated China's economic ties with the United States. As of June 12, 2024, U.S. Customs and Border Protection will presume that goods from these companies are produced using forced labor and ban their import, unless U.S. importers can provide evidence to the contrary. This move has sent shockwaves through the Chinese business community, as companies struggle to navigate the increasingly complex and restrictive trade landscape. 
Any businesses that relied on exports to the United States have been forced to shut down, unable to adapt to the new regulations and prove that their goods are not produced using forced labor. The proliferation of counterfeit goods originating from China has also contributed to the mass closure of businesses. A recent report from the South Korean government revealed that 90% of the counterfeit products seized in the country were traced back to China, with some items containing alarmingly high levels of toxic heavy metals, such as lead and cadmium. This revelation has reignited calls for more stringent enforcement of intellectual property rights and increased scrutiny of Chinese manufacturing practices. In recent years, many private enterprises, especially the owners and entrepreneurs, are closing down. Private enterprises in China contribute more than 50% of tax revenue, over 60% of the national GDP, more than 70% of technological innovation, and over 80% of urban employment. Therefore, the large-scale collapse of private enterprises would have severe consequences. The large-scale closure of private enterprises would undoubtedly lead to massive unemployment, triggering a series of social issues and potentially increasing social unrest. If private enterprises vanish, half of China's GDP would disappear, and so as would struggle to sell their products. Moreover, private enterprises are crucial components of the industrial chain for so as. In many industries, so as control resources but outsource the actual work to private enterprises. If private enterprises collapse, who will handle the supporting industries? The collapse of private enterprises would cause widespread unemployment, leading to a decline in overall living standards and the exodus of wealthy individuals. When society becomes unstable, wealthy people will inevitably seek new paths, including leaving the country and transferring their assets, which could create a vicious cycle for society. Taking advantage of the situation, the rise of professional closure agencies in China has also contributed to the mass closure of businesses. These agencies specialize in helping struggling business owners evade large debts and legal accountability by employing tactics such as changing legal representatives and diverting customers. The emergence of these agencies has created a thriving black market, where individuals from disadvantaged backgrounds are recruited to become professional debt bearers. As a result, many businesses have been encouraged to close their doors and abscond, leaving customers and employees to bear the brunt of the losses. This trend has further eroded consumer confidence and contributed to the instability in the market, leading to a wave of business closures across various industries. As businesses across China continue to shut their doors at an alarming rate, the human cost of this economic crisis is becoming increasingly apparent. The mass closure of businesses is not just a matter of financial losses and economic instability it is a devastating blow to the lives of countless individuals and families who are struggling to survive in the face of mounting adversity. For many Chinese citizens, the sudden loss of their jobs has left them without a means to support themselves and their loved ones. As the once thriving businesses that employed them shut down, these individuals are thrust into a world of uncertainty and despair. With no income and few prospects for finding new employment, they are forced to confront the harsh realities of poverty and homelessness. The streets of China's cities, once bustling with the energy and optimism of a nation on the rise, are now filled with the desperate faces of those who have been left behind. Men, women, and even children can be seen huddled in doorways and alleyways, their meager possessions scattered around them as they seek shelter from the elements. Many have resorted to begging or scavenging for food, their dignity stripped away by the cruel hand of fate. I truly have nothing left now. It's 2 a.m., and I'm still outside with no home to go to. I don't know where I should go and I feel so helpless. This is the first month since my company went bankrupt. Today I cleared out all my assets. Now, I really have nothing left, not even a dog. I've blocked all my good friends. I don't want to see anyone these days because I'm afraid of loneliness and of my friends seeing me in such a miserable state. During the day, I spend all night fantasizing. However, I am well aware that when you are poor and down, the people who look down on you the most are your family and friends. When you are thriving, the people who want to be close to you the most are also your family and friends. This is human nature. When you are in a slump, you have to keep all your grievances to yourself and not give anyone the chance to look down on you. 